Hello everyone. We continue our discussion of viewing transformations with perspective projections. So we have seen various parallel projections so far, orthopic, axonometric, and oblique. And today we move on to perspective projections. So we all know that in parallel projections, the projectors were parallel to each other, and that was the only remaining sort of constraint that we had with oblique projections. We relaxed that. And we have projectors converging at a point, right? This point is known as the center of projection, and uh, or or also the camera center and the eye, right? So uh, we have seen this before. So the projectors converge at this point that is at a finite distance from our world, and this gives us uh, the perspective projection. So the image under the perspective projection has. Various properties. Parallel lines in the image they appear to converge. We get what we know as non-uniform foreshortening. So for different um, uh, different points in the world or different uh, positions in the world when they are when they form the image, the foreshortening at those image points is different because of the uh, change in position in the in, in the world of the object that we are um, that we are imaging. Shape is not preserved under parallel projection, so you will not see the true shape, uh, neither uh, true lengths nor true angles. Generally, uh, you will see see the true uh, shape and um, uh, like true lengths and true angles under certain conditions, but not in general under perspective projection, right? And uh, this is the most natural projection out of all that we have seen because this is how uh, this sort of is very close to how we see, right? So we all know that our abstraction for our eye and for uh, a real camera is the pinhole camera, right? And we have already uh, kind of discussed this that the pinhole camera is a fairly good approximation. So the perspective projection is exactly what happens in a pinhole camera, okay? And perspective was discovered um, in art and illustration before it came to computer graphics. Obviously, uh, and even before that, before it uh, sort of became mainstream mathematics, I think it was discovered in illustration and art. Okay, so it is a very interesting uh, study to see how perspective developed in illustration and art and architecture. Just gives you a, a bit of history. So I'll take you through this short digression into art. To show you how uh, perspective sort of you know developed over the years, we begin our digression into art by looking at this 13th century painting from from Giotto, right? And the painting is of the city of Arezzo, and we see that there is some notion of perspective in this painting, but it is not quite there. So the reason I say that there is some notion of perspective is because uh, we find that uh, even though parallel lines of the image stay parallel, but objects do tend to become smaller in size as you recede into the distance. So we can see that the towers uh, and these houses sort of become smaller as you recede into a distance, but uh, parallel lines are still parallel. So accurate perspective is being attempted by these artists, and they are trying to represent our 3D world onto a 2D canvas or uh, you know any 2D surface like a wall, but uh, they are not exactly there yet. Then in early 15th century, in this painting called the Little Garden of Paradise, we can see uh, more effort uh, being made into representing perspective accurately. So uh, parallel lines are still parallel mostly. So the edges of this box in the lower left are parallel. The edges of the wall are parallel. However, if you look at uh, the edges of the top of this table, they appear to come and converge at a point uh, like this, right? So here there is suddenly some notion of perspective, but the entire painting does not subscribe to it, right? The person who is really credited with rediscovering linear perspective in um, in art and architecture is an architect from 15th century Italy called Filippo Brunelleschi, right? And what Brunelleschi did was uh, this uh, famous experiment 
where uh, he wanted to figure out whether his depiction or his drawings of the baptistry in Florence were um, a good depiction, right? They, they they realistically depicted how the structures looked in the real world. So what he did was one fine day he walked to the baptistry, right? And uh, he stood in front of the baptistry with a mirror in his hand. So this is the mirror in his hand, uh, as you can see. And he had a painting of, uh, he has a, his painting or his sketch of the baptistry that he wanted to verify uh, in his other hand. And what he had done is that he had made a small hole in the uh, in the painting at this point. Okay, so he had made a pinhole at this point. So you can see this uh, small hole here. So, uh, let me sort of mark this hole a little bit more carefully. Uh, he made this small small hole here. Okay. And what this hole really corresponds to is his eye, is, is the location of his eye in, in, in the real world. So if I draw this correspondence, so it is this pinhole is really where his eye was in the, in the real world. Okay. So he's holding this mirror and he's facing the baptistry, right? When he holds the painting in front of his eyes and looks through the pinhole, what he sees in the mirror is a reflection of the painting, right? However, if he now moves the mirror away, what he will see through the pinhole is a view of the real structure because the structure is in front of him. So by quickly moving the mirror in and out of view, once he sees the reflection of his painting, another time he sees the structure, he can verify that the two look the same. And if the two look the same, then he achieved his goals, right? What was his goal? His goal was to make a realistic depiction of the of the structure that was out there in the real world. Okay, which is the baptistry. And the way he accomplished this was really uh, by figuring out that he could place the camera center, which is that pinhole on this line that is known as the horizon line, there is a line um, uh, that, that passes through these vanishing points. And these vanishing points are points where parallel lines appear to converge on the image. Okay? So he kind of rediscovered this fact. We, uh, there is uh, you know, uh, no proof, but there is a hunch that this existed in the world before uh, Brunelleschi uh, rediscovered it, but he is credited with the rediscovery of uh, linear perspective in modern times. The reason it is called linear perspective is because it is mapping straight lines to straight lines, uh, even under perspective, whether they appear to converge or they are parallel uh, is immaterial to uh, that word. But um, Brunelleschi figured this out, and after he figured this out, you know, it just caught on and it, it, it can, it showed up everywhere in painting, uh, you know, during the Renaissance uh, in, in art and it, it became mainstream in architecture and uh, so on. Okay. The first painting that clearly shows perspective is, um, is this fresco by Masaccio. This again from the 15th century and here you can clearly see that if you extend these lines uh, on this vault that the vaulted roof that the artist has drawn. So if you stand in front of this, so fresco is usually a huge painting. If you stand in front of this, your eye level will somewhere be uh, at, at, at this height and you're looking up, okay? And the artist has employed perspective to ensure that, you know, all these lines sort of form this cone, right? So they form this cone of rays. And the principal subject of his painting lies inside uh, this cone of rays. So the user's attention is, uh, you know, naturally drawn to this uh, this cone. So perspective is being used to great effect in this fresco, right? Uh, another very nice example of perspective is this painting of the School of Athens by Raphael. And here also, if you extend the 
lines uh, on the painting you will find that they all appear to converge at uh, you know where is the center of attention in in, in the painting Okay, and this painting is also also huge and your eye level is somewhere here and you would be looking up when you uh, look at this painting. Okay, so uh, I think uh, that uh, this sort of establishes how perspective was discovered or rediscovered and put to great use in art and architecture. And these ideas, once they were established or discovered, they spread around the world, right? So here is a painting from India, uh, which is a uh, position in front of the Lal Kila. And uh, you see that, uh, you know, it follows perspective. That is, the uh, parallel edges tend to converge on the painting. So coming back to our math, how do we represent this nice perspective projection in terms of our matrices, right? So, uh, first let us formulate the perspective problem. So, given a point in 3D and a camera center at ZC, we want uh, to form a projection of the 3D point on the Z is equal to 0 plane. So, this is Z is equal to 0 plane, right? So, P prime is the image point, P is the world point, and ZC is the camera center. So, if you look at this uh, triangle, right, this, so I should, uh, B, so okay. Actually, E is the same as P, and D is the same as P prime. Okay. So if you look at this triangle. Then by just by in sim inspecting similar triangles, you can write these equations about y prime and uh, zc, right? So y prime by l2 is y by l2 minus l1, where uh, l2 is is this distance and l1 is that distance. Okay. Similarly for zc, you can write this, and uh, by using these two equations, you get a form for computing y prime. So y prime is y by 1 minus z by zc. Okay. Now, uh, how do you get x prime? Well, you have another triangle here, which is on the on the um, x z plane. Okay. And you can look at this triangle. So now we are looking at this triangle. So let me careful in writing this a e b b b right and if we look at this triangle then we find that uh, we can write a similar equation for x prime and then x prime turns out to be x by 1 minus z by z c so exactly analogous to how we have uh, y prime Okay. And uh, what we will see next is how to construct a matrix so that we can get this x prime and uh, this y prime by multiplying that matrix with the homogeneous point of the 3D point. So we want to take a perspective projection matrix, multiply it with the homogeneous coordinates of a 3D point and get this X prime and Y prime, right? So that is what we will look at next. So here is the perspective transformation. So I am calling it a transformation and not a projection. So I want to make this distinction. The projection is only when we zero out the Z component, okay? Uh, so you can always do that by, you know, appending uh, or pre-multiplying with the projection on the z is equal to zero plane. So when I'm not doing that, I'm just calling it a perspective transform. So look at this perspective transform. It is identity for the most part, except that I have this non-zero term here. So for affine projections, remember that we had 0, 0, 0, 1. 
Now I have this non-zero R value here. And what does this R do? So this is a 3D point, right? This is our transformed point. And because we have not projected it to Z is equal to zero, so Z will also get a value. So if you just take a product, what do you get? You get X, Y, Z. And for the homogeneous coordinate, now instead of getting one, you get RZ plus one. Okay, so this is interesting. If you dehomogenize this point to get back the Euclidean point, you will get X prime as X by RZ plus one, Y prime as Y by RZ plus one, and Z prime as Z by RZ plus one. Okay. Okay, so we got some X, Y, Z. Uh, x prime y prime z prime but we wanted to get these x prime and y prime so where are these well you just have to do a simple substitution and substitution is just that you do a substitution of the kind r is equal to minus 1 by z c and the moment you substitute this into these equations you will find that you get your desired form okay and you zero out the z prime component by uh, pre multiplying with the projection on the z to zero plane so the final coordinates that you get in homogeneous coordinates look like this x y zero r z plus one and now you substitute for uh, r this value and you dehomogenize the point and you get this x prime and this y prime right so therefore you get the perspective transform so remember when i say perspective transform i only mean this matrix when i say perspective projection then i mean the product of these two matrices so i'm making this distinction now so a transform still keeps you in 3d whereas the projection makes you drop a dimension okay we are zeroing out the z coordinate um so now we have put into use uh this chap here right so it's no longer zero and we see how it nicely lets us do this division when we are dehomogenizing the point okay what is the effect of this the effect of this on the image is that parallel lines appear to converge okay so here is the image of a cube under a perspective projection and it is being viewed by a camera center that is potentially kept somewhere along the z-axis right so it is potentially kept somewhere here and you see that these edges which are parallel they appear to converge at this point okay if you take images in real life with a real camera then also you can see this effect right you can see that these railway tracks they appear to converge here okay so the vanishing point is a point where parallel lines in the image appear to converge okay please remember this okay and these parallel lines are uh, oriented in the world in a way such that they are not parallel to the plane of projection lines which are parallel to the plane of projection will not appear to converge they are the only sets of parallel lines which will not appear to converge in an image which are parallel to the plane of projection all other parallel lines will appear to converge at some vanishing point or the other okay when the parallel lines in the world are parallel to either the x axis or the z axis or the y axis you get vanishing points along the x axis y axis and z axis and then those vanishing points are known as axial vanishing points so for example here you see a axial vanishing point so axial vanishing point is a point along one of the coordinate axis so when the parallel lines in the world are parallel to one of the coordinate axis of our camera coordinate system then you get axial vanishing points those points appear to converge at vanishing points that lie on those coordinate axis like when we will compute the coordinates of this vanishing point they will lie on those coordinate axis okay 
if the parallel lines are not parallel to the coordinate axis in the world they will appear to converge somewhere else okay and since you can have like infinite directions of uh, parallel lines you can have infinite vanishing points okay but you can have only three axial vanishing points so please remember this distinction as well right so we will continue our study of perspective projection by looking at types of perspective next okay and uh, we will do that in the next lecture so thank you